Good evening, this is John Milburn for Laws 11057 Introduction to Law. This is week 12 of Term 3 in 2017. This is exam week and the nature of the exam, which will occur on Thursday the 8th of February, is that you submit an assessment in Word document, single Word document, and upload it in a manner that is entirely familiar to you. Uh, in other words, you upload your assessment as if it was an in, sorry, an in-term assessment. However, this is an examination in the sense that it is a take-home exam and some different rules apply. So if you're watching this as a recorded session, perhaps you've been doing statutory interpretation, um, just to explain a few things. The first is that you must um, upload your assessment within the window of opportunity. Uh, from memory, I think you've got four hours to consider the examination, complete your answer and upload. This is not an assessment which is uh, similar to the assessments that run during term where you have an opportunity to submit late and incur a penalty of 5% per day for late submission up until the cutoff date. Uh, in other words, the cutoff date is 8pm, as I recall, Queensland time on Thursday. So. Um, you have an opportunity to upload your assessment, complete the task, upload in a single Word document, but you must do that within the prescribed period. If you're late, then um, unless there's been some technical issue and it would have to be quite extraordinary, then you would receive no marks for the assessment. On Moodle and through Ucrew and um, through news bulletins, I've provided some idea of what the, the paper will be. It is essentially a paper where it's in two parts, um, but you answer every question on both of the parts. So there is no choice element to this exam. It's not an easy exam, but it's not a difficult exam either. It's certainly nothing like the intensity or difficulty of the examinations that I set for um, this subject last term and in term three of 2000. Uh, 16, 2017. There is um, an opportunity for you to answer a number of essay style questions. There is also a, uh, an opportunity for you to consider um, some research. So when it comes to the research, what you'll need to do is have access to uh, whatever research facilities you use and answer questions accordingly. The test is designed to um, uh, provide an opportunity for people to showcase their ability to provide answers quickly in relation to a number of issues. All right, so I've got some, last week we went through some preferred reading. Uh, I take it you've been through that um, and I identify particular parts of your text in particular that I want you to consider. Tonight I'll speak more generally about uh, writing essays um, but we did cover most of that last week. So for the most part, it's um, a question to deal, it's a matter of dealing with any questions that might arise from you. So does anyone have any questions about the examination? Does anyone have any questions about the content for the course? The nature of um, the writing that I expect from you? The way in which you submit your work or access the work? Any of those sorts of issues? I hope there is, otherwise it could be a very short session. All good? All right. I'm sorry, John. Are there yes, sample papers from last semesters available? Like um, there were, for, sorry, no brain matter left at all. Um, like stat interpretation sample papers? Uh, Deb, I know that you've just finished your statutory interpretation exam. So we fully understand. Uh, and I've been working pretty hard the last few hours as well, uh, as some of you probably know. Um, look, I, I have uploaded some sample examinations in relation to this subject um, through Ucrew and I believe through Moodle, uh, the landing page. Uh, have others been able to access those past exams? Okay, Jen is nodding. So Craig is saying yes as well. So Deb, they're there, um, but they only relate to ones that I've set. Was your question more about other exams? Uh, sorry, the, these are only the recent ones that I've set. Uh, is no, your I, about beyond that? Honestly, I hadn't had a look for um, 
sample or anything to do with Moodle in introduction to law as yet, so I apologise that it's already there and I wasn't aware. Not at all. Um, in fact, it's a very good question because it does remind me to say to those people that haven't already accessed the past examinations that when they see the past examinations, um, they may say, how can we possibly cope with this type of examination? Just bear in mind that I gave students, I think, 72 hours to complete that task or at least uh, 54 hours um, or somewhere in that order um, rather than four hours. So the examination that you'll have will be of a completely different style to the examination that you'll see in the past papers. But that's a good question. So thank you, Deb. Any other uh, questions? Yes, Diane. Sorry, John. So would the, um, the questions that you would be asking, would they be similar to the one maybe set 2016 like semester three I think it was or something like that yeah I would have set that paper as well yes um, and it was a it was a three-hour one a three-hour exam yeah. yeah um and the questions would have been more in essay style type questions so yes. yeah yeah I suspect that is the case I might upload that one as well did you come across any others Diane and uh, perhaps if you could just let us know how you access exams because some um, people will want to know that for this course uh, this unit and other units as well do you remember how you managed to up to access those exams um, i thought i found some on the um on the old in the uni website itself but um i'd have to go back and think because i don't have it here but I'll, I'll try and remember and put it up and I think I might have some notes about how to access old exams as well. Has anyone succeeded in, uh, apart from Diane, accessing old examinations? So, all right, we'll, um, I'll make a note to upload some exams that I've set, uh, others that I may come across, and hopefully give you some information about how to um, access past examinations. All right, so Jenna has as well, but can't remember now as well. So if you, if you remember, um, please let us have a link on UCrew. Could I just thank everyone for their efforts um, in sharing information through UCrew? I think that this cohort has done particularly well in terms of sharing information, supporting each other, and uh, that's important. That'll serve you well throughout your studies and uh, into your careers. All right, so... As I mentioned last week, you still remember some of my th uh, things that I don't like, some of the things I do like. Um, in terms of exam technique, I think just to ensure that you, as a general rule, match the amount of time that you spend on a question with the number of marks. And uh, if you find yourself in the unfortunate situation of being unable to uh, give all the answers that you would like in the manner that you would like, then bear in mind that the first 50% of the exam marks are much easier to obtain than the second 50%. In other words, what I'm saying is don't concentrate entirely on some parts of the paper and ignore others. I say this every term, every unit, but every time a number of people don't answer uh, one question or, or two. And I think what you do is you've got to get something down on paper in relation to all the questions because if you just get a few things down then you're going to pick up some easy marks rather than the, the difficult marks at the end of um you know at the, at the pointy end if you understand what i mean all right so make effective use of your time um, map out a plan for your answer before you start to write generally speaking unless you're very talented unless you're really on the ball with it there's nothing wrong with having some preset answers prepared so if you think you have an idea of what the question might be, then you can prepare an answer for that question and modify it uh, depending on what you're presented with. If you have no idea what the answers, uh, the questions will be, um, you can still pre-prepare. In other words, if you like to present a document with a particular template, maybe with a cover sheet using certain footnote referencing, um, in a certain style, then you can prepare that. So my expectation is that you will at least do that so that when you get into the exam, you've already typed out your name, student number, 
the name of the examination, things that you know you would normally do for an assessment, ready to fill in the details. So that's not cheating by any means, that's just being well prepared. And um, you can have blocks of answers written out in relation to various topics. I'm hesitant to say anything by way of an example of a topic for fear that you may take it the wrong way and see that as an exam hint. Um, so I'm not gonna give any specific exam hints, um, but you know what I mean. There are, if you read through your material, there's a range of topics that you might consider and you might want to either make notes or write paragraphs in relation to those topics. And there's nothing at all wrong with cutting and pasting into the examination. Remember, of course, that if you refer to some work, you must reference that source um, in some manner. And because you've got an exam that you're taking at home using your own computer, using your own documents, I see no reason why that shouldn't be footnote referencing. In other words, where possible, comply with the AGLC requirements. All right, any questions arising from that or any other questions? Can I ask one quick question? Yes, Diane. You had, you know how we have had the problems each week uh, and some people have been answering them very well <laughs> and putting them up each week. You did say at one point very early on in the course that it's okay to use someone's answer to one of those questions if it's appropriate for whatever your, your question might be. Yep. How do you reference that? reference that to the author and the source. So if, uh, for example, someone likes your answer, they can reference that source, Diane Edwards, U Crew, uh, Introduction to Law. Or sorry, okay. Moodle, Introduction to Law. Moodle Introduction, okay. Just Not somewhere that I can idea. What you don't want to do is pass it off as your own work. Do you understand no. what I mean? And, oh, yeah. no. But if, however, you simply cut and pay somebody else's work and say, this is, this is a good response, then don't expect that I will give you much credit for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you Thank still you. need to apply an independent mind uh, to that. So yes, that written material is just like any other written material um, that needs to be acknowledged and sourced. And of course that goes to the credit of the person who wrote it, but also to you for having identified it as being appropriate. Thank you. Very good question, Diane. Any other questions? If you're stuck, one good thing to consider is the IRAC method. Um, go back to first principles. Think about how you might structure a legal question by considering those issues, the rules, applying and concluding. When you're under pressure, there is a tendency, both in written form and oral form, to do something that I dislike. And that is to create some long-winded, wandering answer. The general rule is that if you're under pressure, keep your sentences short. You're less likely to get into trouble if you do. So does that make sense? Um, it's also more readable, generally speaking. I don't mind if people use longer sentences. Um, in fact, sometimes I really do like it, provided they're well constructed. But the reason I say use short sentences is generally speaking, it's a safer way to go. Having said that, <clears throat> generally avoid dot point summaries. In other words, what I want you to do is develop your arguments logically rather than necessarily putting in dot points and asking me to join the dots, if you know what I mean. Sometimes people repeat the question. You don't need to do that. You can if you wish. I would personally not do that. I see that as a waste of your time, but it's up to you uh, if you wish to do that or not. But I can see what the question is, so you don't need to. However, uh, you do need to develop your answer in a logical fashion. So you still need to introduce the reader to the topic and develop from there where appropriate. Yes, Diane? Uh, no, no question. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, I must have accidentally you, tipped. <laughs> you've, you've hit the, the go button. All sorry. Right. No, that's all right. So you don't receive any marks for repeating the question. And if you don't receive any marks for it, then I would say, why do it? So as a general rule, what you do is maybe state your conclusion, argue in favour of it. Another thing that you might want to consider doing is proofreading your work. Run it through the proofing uh, mechanism in Word because, I don't know, I just, have a, I just have an eye for spelling or grammar or issues to do with formatting. Um, I can't help it, but it draws my eye. So if it has an unprofessional look about it, uh, whilst I don't penalise you greatly, it's just not a good look. And those of you, uh, Diane, uh, etc., working in law firms, you'll know that um, the clients expect a pres uh, professional presentation. So um, it's all part of the learning experience. All right, so after the examination, I will provide some feedback, but the feedback is generalised to the class. It's not specific personalised feedback as you would have experienced for the first two assessments. Most students will answer questions quite well. Um, some of the things that you might want to consider uh, relate to being able to um, uh, source your work back to original sources. If you're stuck um, trying to think about things, then always, um, you know, referring back to the Australian Solicitor's Conduct Rules or the Bar Association Rules, the Barrister's Rules, is a good fallback, think in terms of ethics. Uh, is a good way of uh, adding value adding to your paper and um, uh, always be thinking be conscious of the separation of powers issue it crops up surprisingly often so it may be that you uh, need to consider answering the question not just from the perspective of what courts think but also how um, a particular area of practice is dealt with by the executive and by parliament Okay, um, also think about the distinction between law and equity and um, think about different remedies that might be available. By that I mean um, different courts have the ability to answer legal questions and provide legal relief in different manners, but not all courts share that. And we've talked about that a lot. So if we're going to deal with major issues in this course, which I try to reflect in the examination, they will be issues about legal research and understanding the legal process, if I can use that term. So Diane has a question. Um, do we need to cut and paste the question into the document before answering or just take question one? Oh, sorry, of course you can cut and paste. That's a very quick way of um, dealing with it. Um, you, you don't need to cut and paste the question in, just answer, you know, just question one, question two is fine. Or maybe just a heading so that um, I can follow that. All right, so I promised you a short session tonight. Um, for those of you that have done statutory interpretation, thank you for doing so. And you'll be aware that I need to get back to see what's happening in that regard. Uh, are there any questions, comments, feedback? Apologise that I'm not saying much tonight. Okay. Um, Craig had put a question up about how long till the grades come oh, back. Yes. Um, well, basically, you won't receive your grades for the assessment until you receive your final mark. So I forget the day of um, the day the day that the marks are released, but you will see those um, results at that time. So answer is you won't get your grades back until the university goes through its process. Um, and I suspect that that will be probably three or four weeks after the examination. So it takes a little while, but that's a good question. Thank you, Craig. Sorry, I'm not specific about the actual date, but when I recall that or find it, I will um, uh, post it on Moodle and you crew let you know. Someone might already be aware of the return of uh, grades, Mark. But um, any other questions, comments, 
Good. Okay. Well, we might wrap it up at that. So this will be our last session for introduction to law this term, uh, this unit. Thank you very much for attending. Many of you have attended on multiple occasions during our weekly sessions. I really appreciate that. I thank you for it. Those of you watching this recorded session, thank you very much for attending and cooperating. Uh, just one final request. If you haven't had your say, please hit the, the big red button. Um, it's important for me in the university. So everyone, thank you very much. Good luck with your exam on Thursday. Uh, your online paper. I've got to stop saying exam. It's an online paper. Uh, I think you'll find it fairly comfortable without certainly being easy. So all the best and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.